Many men have nothing to smile about Been broke down, too proud to cry it out Walk a mile in my boots and you know what I'm about I took some licks and I took some hits And I found out them bones Can actually break sticks But them words are powerful as shit Hello, everyone, and welcome to Let the Paint Dry. Here we are again. Uh, we're switching up just a little bit. We're doing the second uh, Thursday. I think that's what this is, the second Thursday and the fourth Thursday. Um, just really just kind of reorganizing how we do, but it's still Let the Paint Dry. It's still us doing what we do, and we're still working on everything that we're working on. So we're so honored and thrilled to be here back in the studio again um, so we do, as always, we open with an opening song, a medicine song, to ground us and to get us back into our bodies. in love to sit with love yaba deiro yaba deiro every day every hour we can call it down call it down into our bodies i said yaba weiro So that gets us where we need to be, uh, to, to gets us in our body, it gets the vibrations in, in my chest and in my back and my gut and my, my legs and, and I keep, I stay grounded. I, I move my feet under the table. You can't see it, but they're, where they're flat, 
where I can get grounded in just where where I'm at my body. And um, I last few few weeks um, I've spent um, taking some time to get away, taking some time to get to nature, taking some time to sit alone, and. What is interesting for me was my, I initially thought that I would, it would be this very peaceful thing. It would be this very like tranquil. And I'm a person who can be still and quiet. I know certain personalities need people around them. And I love people around me in certain periods of times, but I also like quiet. And it's just the way I'm made and wired. But what was interesting with this time that I took away to just sit still, just be still, to sit alone in a room for a few days, get by some water, go to the beach, and just sit with nature, is that it wasn't as relaxing as I thought. Because I was sorting through all of my emotional stuff. I was sorting through things that hadn't been dealt with. I was sorting through things that maybe I've been dealing with, but they aren't resolved. And I'm working through them. I'm growing. This is all emotional stuff. But I think it's really important because our emotions is what the thing I learned many, many years ago in high school with my political science teacher. He said, emotions run the economy. And emotions is just energy in motion. We've heard that. So it's connected to business, to life, to love, to loss, to death, to birth, energy. And I realized that you go sit in a hotel room or Airbnb and you sit alone and all your stuff comes out and you got to face all your demons. They just hop out and they sit in the room and look back at you. And those that are willing to do it, I think it's still valuable. It doesn't feel as good as I thought in my head, but I think it's healthy to just get to kind of look at myself, smell myself, if you will. Um, You sit in a room alone long enough, you see how messy you are or how clean you are or how OCD you are, how funny you are, moving furniture all over the place. Uh, And, but it also made me more grateful and made me realize how much I need nature and how much rituals are important to me. And one of the rituals that I've been doing is um, smoking. Not smoking cigarettes, but smoking cannabis. I have no judgment on neither. And it's been a spiritual journey. And I didn't expect it to be as spiritual as I thought. Every time I get high, there is a nugget of wisdom that I gain, some sort of self-awareness, some sort of truth, some sort of decompression, like a spiritual decompression. That I didn't expect. It's taken me 41 years to get high. And... That is something that was very surprising for me. That was very, um, and very fulfilling. The thing that I, it was funny because all the things that I talk about sort of just get amplified and in, 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 in when you get high in a more intimate way, you know, my high start out, um, with just like a little bit of nerves. I've been smoking a, um, indica, I believe for all the real weed heads, correct me if I'm wrong. So I've been smoking that and just working my way through it. And and the first part of the high is kind of a little jittery, not an uncomfortable jittery, just a little bit. And then I get giggly and everything's funny and loose and and feeling just really that just um, free childlike innocent silliness. And then it gets where I can see my words, where I can see what when I say, if I said boat, I can see the word boat floating in front of me. And if I, um, and then things start spinning quickly, but not uncomfortable quick. And I'm in this place of really being aware of my words and aware, just kind of aware that I'm high. 
And then it moves to this where the consciousness clears up and I move to this place where I'm completely clear and at peace and it's in my body and it move. I've had some highs that have moved all the way from like my third eye area, like my forehead, all the way down to my feet. And those have been beautiful highs to just get into this place of very much self-awareness. And these are some of the things that I have learned in getting high and making it a ritual, a spiritual ritual to honor the herb, honor the earth, honor those who have smoked it before, honor yourself in slowing down and making it like you would drink a scotch or you just slowing a, a good glass of wine. You get all the notes. There's a physical pleasure and catching the different tastes and flavors. But there's a spiritual and an energetic and a, you know, it's a drug. Or I have, some people would argue, it's a herb. It's a powerful herb. So if I'm incorrect and calling it a drug, forgive me. I'm new at this. But it's been a journey. So the thing that I've learned is that I need to support myself mentally. That needs to be something that I'm cognizant of, that I have intention behind, intention behind mental wellness, just on myself on a personal level, whatever that means, I got to figure that out, that I need mental support, that I can't just walk around with whatever PTSD that I'm carrying and, and call it good. I have to be aware of that. That'll make everybody who's in my life, that'll make their life better. Also, just that we're doing the best we can. Humans are just doing the best we can and that they're perfect. They're perfect just how they are. They don't necessarily, like, there's a level of perfection that we are at right now. We're whole. I am whole. And, of course, we can work on things. I'm constantly working on myself, and this is all a part of it. But I am whole right now. Just a few scars of life that happened to all of us. And so this level of acceptance and this level of showing up for people and this level of showing up for yourself first so that you can actually show up for other people and understanding what that looks like and also understanding what boundaries look like and, and my love language and examining if that's healthy and how to love in a healthy manner. That's, that's what I'm working through, how to love in a healthy manner, how to love myself in a healthy manner, how to love myself energetically, how to love others. It's, and, you know, it, it kind of comes back to love. And I don't know if love is a big enough word because we're in the month of f February and it's Valentine's. I, I've stopped celebrating Valentine's many years ago because it was too chocolate, roses, dinners, and everybody's trying to do that, and so the restaurant is overpacked. It ends up not being romantic. The flowers are three or four times just on that day, and if you got them the very next day, they drop 50%, 20%, um, excuse me, like 60%. It felt like a con. It felt like on this day you're making up for everything that you did wrong, and, and, and uh, it just felt, ugh. But love is, there's not a bad thing to celebrate love. We need to celebrate it more, but then there's, there's nothing wrong with having a day that you celebrate love for the person you love. There's nothing, that, that's good. But for me, it didn't work for me. But love is this thing in my life that I'm thinking about every day. And I'm thinking about in a deeper way than just red hearts and roses and romantic hotel rooms and dinners and and sex and all that. I'm thinking about it on a life sustainable level that includes and encompasses all of those things, but is so authentic that it will hold you till your deathbed. That's the love I'm chasing. That's the love I'm trying to understand. And that's the journey through cannabis, through nature, through sitting with my demons that I'm addressing and trying to understand and explore. And that one is not white sheets with red rose petals. 
But it's so much more important because it's it's the love that will be there when it's all said and done. Through the the the, the waves and the 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 years of life, I want sustainable love. And that's what I'm working on and trying to cultivate in myself. So and, and, and seeing nature, just, just slowing down and unplugging from social media and unplugging from um, just all of the energy that's going out and sitting on a beach. I go to Roosevelt Beach. It's my favorite spot in Washington. Washington has a lot of beautiful spots, but I don't know what it is with Roosevelt Beach. Roosevelt Beach, every time I go, there's this bald eagle that comes out. And in my mind, it's the same bald eagle. So stay with me. Let, 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 me, let me live my life. It, it is, uh, this eagle came out the first time that I was there. I went a couple times. And this eagle's huge. I don't know if I told this on the last podcast. I can't remember if I went. I don't know. I was telling it somewhere, so forgive me. The, the eagle is huge. I'm out on the beach up, up against the water, the threshold of the water, and this eagle is flying up in the tree, it's a bluff at Roosevelt Beach and all these trees are on top and it drops off and this eagle is flying along the trees and, and, and it's like the trees are a long ways away and you, I see this, this bird and it's a, a nice distance away. I wouldn't say a mile, but almost, not quite a mile. It's less than that from the threshold, you know, when the tide's out. And this eagle is flying across, and, and no matter how far the eagle gets away, the eagle still, I can tell it's huge. And I can see with my bad eyes that it's a bald eagle, the white head, the feathers. It's, it's uh, majestic, regal, royalty, and it's just, there it is. And it flew all the way down to the end, uh, or just, yeah, to like, this end of the beach, of that section of the beach. And it still was huge. No matter how far I got away, it still was, you could tell, this bird is big. It's bigger than normal. And then it landed in some trees, and I'm just going around and just taking pictures and content and enjoying the beach. And then a few minutes later, that eagle comes back. And it flies all the way to the other side. And it got far away, but I could still see it. It was so big. And this eagle flew so high that it flew into the clouds. I could see it disappear from the clouds and then come back out. And I started to think about that eagle being up there and what I looked like in comparison to where that eagle was from and in the sky and just the wind and the, and the temperature because it was cold. It's wintertime, right? And just how that eagle is just able to live in that environment without just its feathers and just its, its whole. It doesn't have all the stuff that I have. And I just just had this moment. And there's no epiphany to the story. It's just sitting with this eagle and just catching its energy and just seeing it and looking at it and admiring it. And then seeing myself. There's, and it was just that moment was a moment. I didn't have a, a spiritual breakthrough or a new understanding of nature and animals except for just looking at it and just realizing how complete it was and how tough it was like what I would need if I got up that high in the sky without a plane or you know but just out against nature and just how I would need so many things and so you get a little bit of your 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 fragility you you your mortality and just how soft we are as humans and I just have respect for that eagle and just honor that eagle and then I went again uh, later on, like a, like a week later, went out to the beach, and that eagle came out again. And then I just take it personally. I'm just like, mm, it just came out for me. Good to see you, old friend. And I, I have no, it's, I, it's not the same eagle, but it looks like the same eagle. Who knows? It's huge. So... With my little journey out in nature and sitting with 
herb and sitting with myself. I'm in this place of just self-care. What is healthy? What is healthy in 2021? What is healthy business-wise? What is healthy energetically? What is healthy um, food-wise, rest-wise, water-wise? What is healthy? And I just want to do that so I can continue to show up for those that depend on me, those that I depend on. And it, and it's spilling into my art practice. I have a show coming up. I was going to announce it later, but now's a good time. Um, February 15th through March 19th called Closer. If the big paintings get accepted, because I just dropped off a bunch of paintings, and they'll, the curator will decide what actually goes in the show. The big paintings are crazy. They're like my dreams, me sorting out dreams. But it's healthy. It's all a part of the, the, the energetic and the, the medicine. Art is medicine. Herb is medicine. And one thing I learned about cannabis is what you bring to cannabis, your energy, your mental state, your mental wellness, your relaxation is what your highs end up being. So whatever you bring, so it's important to enter into a high in a relaxed state, in a ritual state, not in a state of anxiety, not in a state of anger. Um, and that part was new. That was something I wasn't aware of. You can enter it into all those things, but who knows what will come up. So it, it, you, it's a... It's a partnership. It's not something that is just going to completely support you and you don't have to bring any type of responsibility to the situation. You have to bring, you have to be responsible with what you're bringing to your sessions. But that's a personal thing. That's not for me to manage or, or that's all I'll say on it. So, but that's been very cool to see that and to really make it a ritual and a part of my life and something I'm extremely excited about and excited about um, this season of caring for myself. And hopefully that is something that you can get on, whoever you are, if you're so inspired. You can get on that self-care thing because the more we care for ourselves, the more we can care for others. And we are connected. We're not alone. We're all in this, we're that ego out there at Roosevelt Beach to me sitting there and everybody that comes there, we're all, this is all our world. And this earth, this planet earth, we have taken from it. We have sold the raw materials and we peddle it. And we, we've made it an economy. We've made it this, this thing. And I'm not here to say tear down the whole economy tear down our, our infrastructure. But what the ancestors knew, and this is something I'm pretty clear on, is they knew that this wasn't something to be peddled. That the earth was our medicine. It was our spiritual guide. It was our home. It was our bed. It was our life. It was our, it was our everything. That's what the old folks knew. It was our everything. Now we have become very sophisticated. Our minds have become very sophisticated. Our technology is very sophisticated. It's magic. Our radio waves, our cell tower, you know, all that, all those frequencies, it's magic. But the original way of knowing is still relevant. And the original way of understanding is still relevant. And our technology has not transcended that level of truth. The truth that the ancestors knew, the truth of nature. Our technology has not transcended the sun and the importance of the sun in our environment. We haven't transcended that yet. So that is going to require us to move forward with humility. 
with all that we know and all that we're able to do in our with our world with our cell phones and computers and we're able to do like everything with all that we still need humility and we still need to understand that we have not transcended nature there's there's still there is a wisdom and awareness and truth and an original knowing that we need to remember, go back and re-examine and understand. Because our technology does a lot of things for us, but it doesn't, we, we tell the robots what to do. They don't tell us, at least not yet. <laughs> uh, that's a whole nother podcast. Uh, so there's, there, enjoy our technology, but have understanding of where the hard materials came from and the earth that gave it and honor that, respect it, understand this original knowing, understand that our earth is everything. It is our everything. I also have a Patreon, switching gears to the administrative stuff. I have a Patreon, and it's a powerful, unique way that you can join and support. However, we have a couple little uh, Patreons or whatever you call them, members. So that's beautiful. Thank you so much. And then if you want to sponsor in a bigger way, reach out. We have all kind of ways that you can sponsor. Um, we're so pleased and so honored and, ch and challenged in this time to move forward with this work and to move forward with uh, let the paint dry and our art and everything that we're going to be doing in the next uh, year, in this year, 2021 and 2022, we're sort of planning out that far. Um, you, you know, you set a blue uh, uh, framework and then whatever happens, happens. Um, you shoot for it. So we're, we're, we're extremely challenged and extremely um, inspired. We have a lot of uh, exciting things to look forward to and things that we're working on and just paintings, just the, that's what we're an artist. I'm an artist, that's what I do, I paint. And sculpt sometimes, but mainly it's the painting. So with that being said, I am moving with a sense of just humility and gratefulness and trying to work on this, this lifelong love energy, sacred love the kind of love that you have at the end of your life. And I'm a bit of an old soul, so you have to bear with me. I always talk in these terms. I've always been that way. So with that being said, I think it's a good time for a closing song. Mm -be -do, bo -de -do -do. I said, boom, be -do, boom, bo -do -do. Gotcha. boom, be -de, bo -do -bo -do. Gotcha. boom, be -de, boom, boom, gotcha. gotcha. boom, be -de, boom, boom, I walked a mile, mm, baby, boom, 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 oh, down the dusty roads, I said, boom, baby, boom, boom, baby, I'm just a young boy, boom, baby, boom, boom, baby, I walked a mile down, boom, baby, boom, baby, around the dusty roads, I said, boom, baby, boom, baby, I said, Boom be day ba boom be day. I walked a mile day ba boom be day. Oh, just to see your face. I said a boom be day ba boom be day. I said a boom be day ba boom be day. I walked a mile day ba boom be day. Oh, just to see your face. I said a boom be day ba boom be. I walked a mile day doom day to see your face. Go in love, do work that matters, let the paint dry. Mm -hmm.